Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from the UK, London, England, land of Brexit. <laughs> and welcome to you there on Instagram land as well. Want to wish you a wonderful evening. I'm going to have a very packed evening tonight. Um, hope you, hope everybody had a, a good week. I put a video out this morning, uh, this afternoon. Oh, sugar. I put a video out this afternoon whereby I was um, singing a, a old disco song or something like that. I um, don't know if, you want, if you're on Instagram land, you can actually see it. It was really, what should I say, really fun. Just going back into my past, throwback moment, listening to some funky disco. Heard the John Reed, Ted, guys. Um, let me just get this thing sorted. Friday evening, London, UK time. Awesome. Let me just uh, wait for persons to come on. And uh, Well, it, it, it has been a very, um, well, I consider every week a very interesting week. Um, I consider every day a very interesting day. I, I consider um, every moment uh, an interesting moment. And I consider every opportunity to share positive and empowering messages, something which I find very um, intriguing, I must say. You know, very intriguing. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to go straight into it because uh, someone said to me that I was unhappy. I was unhappy because I wasn't happy with um, the fact that persons didn't think like me in a certain way or my ideology wasn't very popular in the sense that uh, I was somewhat annoyed by the the responses towards a fellow black man which is called Kanye West and um, and I said it was very disappointing I must say whereby uh, our people tend to really emotionally lay out and go for it in some in somewhat seeking to demoralize and damage our own as much as possible one may not agree but at the same time one still have to somewhat, what should I say, um, seek to uh, be tolerant. Tolerance is something which I find lacking in many ways, tolerance. And, uh, and, and as a result of that, I said I wanted to, to, to somewhat dissect into, into, into this a bit more, uh, dissect into it a bit more as to the rational and the reason. As you can see my topic, it says, uh tonight let's go high not let's go low and kick them <laughs> as someone said we're not going to kick anybody we're going to go high and can yeah. west and i said what is it about what is it about can west that unleashes hate from segment of the the black community and i say segment of the black community and i say join me tonight um without a doubt now what, what I've got in store, I, I, I thought that it was best, instead of me talking tonight, let me go to the United States of America. Let me fly across into, the, um, into Tennessee. Uh, I'm not British, I'm Jamaican, so I might say it wrong, um, Patrick. <laughs> is, it, is it Tennessee? Ten T Tennessee. <laughs> it's Tennessee. Tennessee. Yes. You see, we learn every day. We, we get empowered every day. So we learn every day. So it's it's, it's, it's Tennessee. Yes. And so I, I've chosen to ask um, Patrick Hampton, um, who's a resident of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Mm. Yes. Yes, who's the vice president of community development for a local nonprofit and the associate pastor of a local Baptist church. 
Patrick, thank you for coming on. Hey, thank you for having me, man. I'm glad we can finally do this. <laughs> yeah, you see, I, I like to connect with people all over the world, you know what I'm saying, and I've interfaced, and I'm not really, uh, I've got lots of people who follow me, but not lots of people who agree with me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I want to try to, <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> I want to try to find the rationale of lots of people following you, but yet they don't agree with you, but... Um, and people sometimes say to me that I, I only like persons who think like me. And I said, well, actually, 90% of the people who follow me don't agree with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's so true. Uh, being a conservative, I think that's kind of how it's going to be from this point on. Yes. But listen, uh, let's go straight into it. Um, there's this issue which I'm actually trying to razzle around and I thought it was best to come at it from the United States of America even though it's much deeper what I'm trying to work out here and in discussions is why is it that um, our people let's deal with our people let's let's call a spade a spade mm -hmm. find it so easy to call each other derogatory names and seek to put each other down because we disagree politically, religiously, let's say politically, really. Mm -hmm. And let's call a spade a spade and dig right into it. Kanye West. Whoa, mm. toxic name, very toxic name. Now, I go, I go into the background first of myself as to why I like Kanye West. I'm into rap, you know? And I mm -hmm. used to rap many years ago when I was growing up in Jamaica. And somebody was saying I should go up a rap before I start. So I'm going to say, for all the people in the place to be, my name is Sid, I want you to listen to me. Well, I went over there into Tennessee, and I got the man Patrick Hampton, you see. Patrick Hampton going to talk about Kanye West and about Trump and all the people that you see all the way. So I tell the listen, people in the place to be, come on and listen to the rap that we're going to talk about, see. And Patrick, who knows, he's going to maybe do the beatbox, you see. And I say, <laughs> so you see what I'm trying to say right there. <laughs> I do freestyle. I, I, wow. I just, I used to do this a lot, you know what I mean? So I, I follow rappers and I'm intrigued by rapping and I used to break dance and in my kids now, they're, they're even doing some good beatboxing. So it is something which is dear to me, rappers. I, I admire rappers, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I, I so Kanye West, in a way, <clears throat> relate deeply to me because I follow him and follow his style of stuff, you know? And I believe that when somebody is um, going down or in a low patch or so, um, it is not right to really kill them. It is more to lift them. So, well, well, if you if you listen to Eric Holder, it says when they go when they go low, they are we're supposed to kick them. <laughs> so you know, I think Kanye West has went a little low um, to to the liberals, and I think that's what's happening to him. He's being kicked, and I'm a little different from you because I grew up listening to rap and hip hop, but as I got older, I've actually gotten away from it because, you know, it has become uh, very violent, very uh, misogynistic and things of that nature. And so it's really difficult for me. I'm in a difficult place right now because yeah. I've been very outspoken against hip hop. But at the same time, I'm starting to respect uh, some of these artists that is leaving the putting the mic down, so to speak and actually addressing issues of the community. So yeah. um, Kanye, the Kanye West effect in America, um, it's real. I mean, people are actually talking about it and listening. I just left the barbershop, and in the barbershop, it was a heated conversation about Kanye West's thoughts and about Trump. Um, and it was very heated, but there were some people that were listening and their mind is turning and they're thinking about different ideas and thinking about what he's saying. So I believe it's a real effect that he's having on our culture here in America. Mm. <clears throat> so, so, so tell me now, um, in America at present, um, and let's not go to the UK yet, in America at present, the, the typical and average black person vote the Democrats. Yes. And, and anybody who deviates and vote for Republican, who happens to be black, is actually escaping from a, a plantation. Is that what we call it? From a plantation? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> if you break uh, it down for me, give me, give me yes. some background. Uh, Set it down for me. Okay, yeah. this, this is basically how it has been working in America for 
the last 60 years. Black people in America hasn't always voted for Democrats. Um, this movement actually started with the New Deal and also started with Lyndon B. Johnson uh, in the 1960s. He had a program called the Great Society where he had declared war on poverty. And what he did was create all of these programs for minorities uh, and black people uh, to where they could come out of welfare. But the problem was it would he would implement these programs in exchange for their votes. Yeah. So black people that would normally vote conservative and Republican saw these programs as helpful. So they began to vote for Lyndon B. Johnson uh, because of these programs. And so Star Parker put it best where she said, we basically, black people basically traded one plantation, which was slavery, for another plantation, plantation which was slavery to the government. And yes. that is what has happened for the last 60 years in America. Black people, you've seen uh, uh, fatherless homes skyrocket since these programs were implemented. Uh, poverty has skyrocketed. I mean, all of these things has hurt the black community. And so now what has happened, a lot of uh, black people, educated black people that have started reading have actually started to lead the Democratic Party. There's a movement called Walk Away that's happening in America where they're walking away from the Democratic Party because we have nothing to show for it. Our neighborhoods are still in shambles. Gangs are taking over our neighborhoods, drugs and prostitution. And then we look over in the areas where Republicans represent and they're growing. Businesses are moving in. And so we wonder, like, why is nothing happening in our community? And we're figuring out it is because of these policies that the Democrats are putting forth. And so as they're leaving, it's called walking away from the plantation. Wow. And they call us uh, runaway slaves. They call us coons, sambos, Uncle Toms, and all types of names. And that's what Kanye West is getting from all over uh, the world right now. He is being slammed and nailed to a cross because he chose to think differently and leave the plantation of the government programs. Wow, and uh, and and since since Kanye West had the the breakdown um, before Kanye West was, you know, rapping as you write with lyrics, which is not really helpful, which is not really productive in a certain way, and people have said that they want back the real Kanye West. The real Kanye West <laughs> is the person of that passed there. Now, um, I, I've listened to. The, the discussion and the speech which took place at the at the White House and and, I, 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 and, and, and I've been looking at different comments from different places black radio station in America and uh, just really concerned um, Patrick and even watching um, Don Lemon and a couple of his people there just really concerned as to how it is so easy for for black persons to use the words or the, 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 the adjectives mm -hmm. which we fought against many years ago, yes. but somehow to find it so easily to, to use it against another black person. And I want to set the record straight here. People might be thinking that I'm here um, defending Canada West, defending Trump. No, no, my issue right here now, just like all the person said, I was unhappy. I said, yes, I'm, I'm very unhappy, whereby it's easy for a black person to actually crucify another one because they don't think alike. I find yes. that very disgusting. And, that, and I think that comes from actually when we talk about the plantation I think it that type of mentality rises from <clears throat> us being on a plantation and all of us actually having to think alike and come up with plans and solutions to slavery. Actually what has happened over the years we, we have this monolithic type of thinking where all of us are supposed to think alike, we're supposed to vote alike, we're supposed to have the same, uh, we're supposed to support the same candidate. And a lot of this has now taken root in the black culture. And so what has actually happened, and I've been telling people this a lot, what has actually happened now, we have actually, when I say we, I'm not talking about just you and I, but we as a black people, 
have actually become the very thing that we hated in the 60s. Wow. Because in the 60s, the, uh, the KKK had, who was created by the Democrats, by the way, by four Democrats, the KKK had secret code words and secret names that they would call us. Yes. And they had ways to stop black Republicans from getting their message out and getting the vote out. That was the sole reason that the KKK was formed, was to stop the black Republican from getting votes. Yes. And what has happened, Don Lemon and a lot of his, um, I call them minstrels that were on the stage or on the TV with them, they have now taken up the hood and become the black KKK to where anyone that rises up and thinks differently or even meets with the Republican president will be destroyed, will be vilified, will be attacked. Um, and we've seen it. Eric Holder just said it the other day, uh, talking about when they go low, we're going to kick them. Hillary Clinton came out and said, we need to, we can't be civil with Republicans. Yeah. Yeah. Maxine Waters came out and was talking about, we need to attack Trump supporters. Ted Cruz in, in Texas was and out eating yeah. with his wife and they attacked him. Uh, and so what we're seeing is them becoming the mob that attacked black people in the 60s. We're becoming the very thing that we once hated. Wow, wow, wow. Now, that, that, is, that is very powerful. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, just welcome to the late one. I'm with Patrick Hampton from Tennessee um, in the States. And uh, we're dissecting and looking at, um, as, the quest, as my statement simply says, why are we so easily to kill and you know, put down one another? Um, if you can hear, as someone was saying that they couldn't hear, but I, I can see people said they can hear. And if you can share this video as well, let's share. Let's have a discussion. As I said, I'm not actually in this position now taking sides. Well, you know, everybody who knows me knows that I'm a conservative in the United Kingdom. And of course, we get the stick here as well. We've got a, we've got a, a young gentleman, um, Patrick, if you follow the UK, uh, is poised to be the possibility of the next uh, mayor of London. Um, mm. the London right now is a gentleman called Sadi Khan. Um, Sadi Khan came from Pakistan. And uh, Sean Bailey is now the conservative candidate for mayorship. So therefore, it's going to be a, a standoff between both of them. And so how, Let me ask you this. How do they treat conservatives in, in the UK? Because <laughs> I got a lot of Americans that's watching. How are you? Are you treated the same way? How is it different? I can tell you this. I will have persons who say they are my friends and they will talk to me and laugh with me. And someone will whisper in my ears and say, if you go onto that other page, you'll see those guys slagging you off and calling you names. And I've been to meetings already where your guy came over here, which was, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, the, with the, with the fluffy hair, what's his name again? Um, 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 Al Sharpton, Al Sharpton. Yeah, yeah, Al Sharpton. Yeah, Al Sharpton came over here once and uh, at this event and, uh, and it was all, all these black Tories, black conservatives. And I saw a lot of my friends that are looking at me and I said, man, I felt really uncomfortable, you know? Uh, but it's a reality. We get called names, the coon, the, the whatever, Tom, all those sort of things. Even if I'm straight from Jamaica, original Ochi man, as so, you know? But yeah. it, it, it is deemed as that, how can you, Silver, how can you be with the traitors, with the racist party? How can you? Sean Bailey's getting the stick already. How can he actually? I know persons who are conservative, and I've been at a conference a while ago, four days in Birmingham, um, watching the Prime Minister dancing, if you miss that dance. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and the, the, you can see the increase of, of black persons there who are just really lovely people, just want to get about their business, wanting to be strategic, wanting to make sure so that we are actually positioned properly in different parties. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you this, the gentleman which is called Sadi Khan, who is the mayor for London, and the home secretary is a guy named Saji Javid, also from Pakistan background. Now, wow. I have not seen, and nobody can tell me where the Asian community or the Pakistan community has come out and attacked any of these guys based on their political affiliation. Wow. Because guess what they are saying? Chill. We got our man there. Our man is in the in position. We may wow. not get what we want, but we are getting our seeds sown. 
Wow. Deep so down. you're basically saying that you don't see the two Pakistani, you don't see the Pakistani people calling these candidates names because they disagree. And because they're from different parties. Wow. But here in America, black people, if you are conservative, you are attacked by other black people. Yeah. I mean, vilified. They actually have a saying that says, we're going to trade you. We're going to trade you away from our race because you associate with a different party. Oh, yeah. They call it, you'll be excommunicated as a black person from the community yes. or so. Yes. Excommunicated. Yes. That, that's sort of the term. And I, I tend to laugh and say that, uh, like the lady Amorosa, she was excommunicated and now she's back in the, yes. <laughs> the, the, the water. But I mean, we, we laugh here, you know, uh, Patrick, we, we laugh, but it, it's, a, it's a very serious matter because I've got two children, you understand? Right. And, um, and we've got young people here, young people who are actually watching and uh, seeing what is that. I've seen young kids, 12 years of age, saying that they, they like conservative. I've seen, there's a young girl as well, she's 12. She said, I'm definitely labor. You know mm. what I'm trying to say? So therefore, mm. we have got to somehow teach our children how they can be uh, have interface discourse without calling each other names and putting each other down. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we all have to live together. But if right. we as adults, and I'm going to qualify the statement, I'm not going to say we or you. I want to say others. Because yeah. I'm not like that. I was saying to a gentleman called Lester Gale, I said, why, do, why are we like I said, listen, I'm not like that. I'm not going to claim it anymore as a we. Right. But but if, if we are not able to, and I don't care, anywhere in the world, if we're not able to actually have this level of discussion without calling other names, I've seen some very disgusting things which people are calling cannabis or calling anybody who is actually conservative or Republican. Mm. They don't know the persons. How can right. I And there is actually um, gangs that are putting hits out on Kanye West. Wow. Um, right now, I mean, there are gangs that are saying that, you know, if they see him in certain areas, in certain places, that he's going to be killed. His life is being threatened. Uh, and I've gone through that as well. My life has been threatened literally because I believe a certain way. It has become that uh, polarizing in America to where if you win an election and the other side doesn't accept the election, that, that means you need to be killed or you're evil. And so that is where I think we're getting off course is because if we can't accept the results of 2016, Trump won the Electoral College in 2016. Trump has our economy is booming here in America. There are more jobs than than people right now. I work in that field with helping people find jobs and I have people calling me, can you please find me somebody? I'll pay them $22 an hour. Can you yeah. just find someone? And so the economy is great. He is doing the best he can with what he has. He's bringing in the Kanye West and he told them, he said, I want the athletes and the rappers to bring me names of people that you feel have been wronged by law enforcement or been wrongly accused and put in prison. Bring me the names and I have my team look at it and we will uh, discuss if they get a pardon or not. No one brought him names but Kanye West and his wife. Mm. No one. And so what has happened, we have become so, we hate, tr they hate Trump so much that they are missing out on where we can be very yeah. successful. And I think we're missing an opportunity here in America. And I'm hoping the tide is turning. We're seeing more conservatives beginning to speak out or come out of the closet. And I hope it gets better. But right now, it is a very dangerous place to be. Yeah, because I, I noticed, um, as you mentioned about persons who have been in prison that they want to get out of, um, there, there was Mr. Johnson, mm -hmm. the lady, who, 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 Ms. Kardashian, um, mm -hmm. you know, with, with that lobby there. And now we have Kanye West mentioned Larry Hoover's uh, lawyer with us today. He's in prison, six life sentences, you know, and whereby Larry Hoover was starting to do some good things. So he said, I want to get Larry Hoover out. Yes. That is, his, that is his solution to trying to help Chicago. He was saying maybe Larry Hoover started the gang called Gangster Disciples. 
and they're saying that he's been reformed in prison. Uh, he wants to get out and he wants to help the community. So Kanye West is speaking on his behalf, trying to get him a pardon to go back into Chicago and to help a lot of the young people. And black people are mad about that. Yeah. Do we have to make a decision? Do we want solutions or do we just want to hate Trump for the next eight years? So we have to make those decisions. And that's why, and me, I am not a Kanye West fan. I yeah. have been very critical on social media and in many of my sermons of Kanye West. But I have to respect the fact that he is at least putting the mic down and yeah. trying to find solutions to problems in the community. I may not agree with his music and his lyrics, but we can work together on finding solutions in the, for the community of Chicago. Okay, let's 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 talk about this walk away now. This walk away thing, and uh, persons are walking away. Um, I followed uh, Candice and a few other persons, and in the process of the walking away, I, I believe there's a time or a period where there's a searching. Mm -hmm. Kanye West is in a process there now. Some people yeah. say he's, he's mad sick. Uh, there's a song in Jamaica, "Mad Sick, Head No Good" or whatever like that. Um, mm -hmm. Well. From a, from a conservative perspective and maybe moving away from the, the slave mentality of being controlled, of saying, you have to take off your hat if you're going to talk to me. And he said, no, no, no. I want to keep on my hat. I want mm -hmm. to say what I want to say. No more am I going to be in bondage, in chains. Mm -hmm. Where is Kanye West now from your perspective? Okay, there is a process of, of walking away. And I think Candace even talks about her process of becoming a conservative, Candace Owens, uh, becoming a conservative and walking away from the Democrat Party. Kanye West is in the initial phase of that. And what happens in that initial phase, and kind of the same thing happened to me. Once I research the Democrat Party, its origin, and historically what the Democrat Party did to black people, and that's, I initially found out about the KKK. I grew yeah. up always thinking that the Republican Party was a part of the KKK. Once I found out that it was four Democrats that were the KKK and terrorizing Republicans, my antennas went up and I was like, well, okay, why wasn't I taught that? And then it sends you on a search. And I began to research the Republican Party and I found out that the Republican Party was actually the party that they that the foundation of the party was to abolish slavery. It was one issue that was that helped founded the party that all of them agreed on. We must abolish slavery. It was black men and it was white men coming together and said, this is not uniquely American. Uh, this slavery thing is going to destroy America. We must start a party to abolish it. They got Abraham Lincoln to run for president. He won. And so now Frederick Douglass began to advise Abraham Lincoln on how we are to uh, abolish slavery. Yes. And we end up going to war. 600,000 Americans died in the Civil War that led to the abolishing of slavery. We shed blood to abolish slavery. And so once I begin to research these things and research Frederick Douglass, research Booker T. Washington, research Madam uh, C.J. Walker, Martin Luther King Sr. was a Republican. And once I begin to research all of those things and you see, man, the Democrats and LBJ, he said this. He said, if we pass this voting rights bill, we will have those N-words voting for us for the next 200 years. Mm -hmm. LBJ actually said those words. If we pass this bill, they will be so emotionally attached to us that they will vote for us for the next 200 years. And that's exactly what happened. Kanye West is in that initial phase of getting all the facts. If you listen yeah. to him, he's saying certain facts. And he said, it was a Democrat party that started these programs that hurt our fathers. He's talking about LBJ. He's making these statements and saying, you know, racism is an invisible wall that's keeping us from uh, pr uh, progress. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so these are the things that he's studying. And that's why at times it may seem like he's rambling. 
but he's actually trying to put all of that information in chronological order and articulate it to the people. You know, Kennaway said something here on welfare here, and I've got, this is what he said. Now, people say it's crazy, but this is something which he said. You know, people expect that if you are black, you have to be Democrat. I have, I have a conversation that basically said that welfare is the reason why a lot of black people end up being Democrat. They say, mm -hmm. you know, first of all, it's a limited amount of jobs. So the fathers lose the jobs and they say, we'll give you more money for having more kids in your home. And then we got rid of the mental health institutes in the 80s and the 90s and the prison rates just shut up. Is there anything insane about that? Can you dissect that statement? That is, that, that is facts. Kanye West basically gave facts. The LBJ Great Society, uh, his programs literally said, if there is a man in your home, you cannot get welfare. You right. cannot get any of these programs, housing, money for housing, money for food. So you had, in, during that time, men willingly leaving the home so their girlfriend or their wife can get these uh, programs. So he is exactly right. But if you ask black people, they'll say he's insane. But those are factual things that actually happened in the 60s. Well, and in, in the UK, um, I believe the gentleman, Sean Bailey, was uh, chastised for saying something. I think about uh, 2006 is uh, 12 years ago, where he said that um, young mothers, single ladies or so, used to have children in order to get homes at that time. Mm -hmm. He's been ripped apart by that now uh, because... It has come up in the news, but it was something we just said in the past. And that's the whole thing about the welfare system, because the welfare system somehow breeds a level of dependency. Mm -hmm. while, while, right. while the Republicans may want to kick you out and say, listen, go and work. You know? yeah. but, but the Democrats tend to want to keep you there. Yeah, it, and it's, it, the program is actually designed to help those that have fallen on hard times. It was designed yeah. for them to, okay, you lose your job, you can get on this program, once you get on your feet and you find a job, you come off of this program. Well, you have citizens in America that get on the program and realize, man, I can make more money just by being on this program than I can work in a job. And what has happened over time, the black community has flocked to those areas and those housing areas. Yes. And that's why, we, that's why it's called a plantation, literally, because those housing projects is where all of the drugs are, all of the violence, all of the gang. There's a housing project where I stay at, where they did a study where there's a 95% chance of every male that come out of those housing projects of being in a gang, a 95% chance. So when the Republicans say, all right, we have to do something about that. And the first thing they may mention, we need to get rid of those housing projects and maybe find out other ways to find housings for these people. The Democrats immediately come out and say, see, those Republicans want to destroy your homes. They want to take you from your, your home. But the, that's where the violence is. And so what has to happen, what, what we have to do, people like you and I that are conservatives, we have to go into these areas and talk nickel and dime with these people. We have to let them understand how if you stay on these programs, you will never build generational wealth for your children. We have to do it. You and I, we have to take the beating from our community and go in there and say there is freedom on the other side. This you know, is what Harriet Tubman did, and that's why she was so successful. You know, Susan now said something a while ago that if Canada West is so dumb and he's unread, how comes he's a millionaire, near to a billionaire? So I, I was thinking about this myself today and said, uh, am I wise being read? Should I, maybe I shouldn't have been a well-read person. <laughs> maybe I'd be more, more, more successful. Yeah. <laughs> because really and truly, really and truly, sometimes we read and we study so much that we become intellectual uh, uh, fools, I must say. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm not calling anybody fools. Nobody, I'm not pointing yeah. at anybody. You know? But I think sometimes we, we can get so caught up in this whole intellectual thing that we miss out on some common sense. And without a doubt, um, you know, 
kind of was just pushing some buttons. But I want to go on to this one here. This is a point here which has been very controversial. Uh, he said, you know, they tried to scare me not to wear this hat. Mm. My own friends, but this hat it gives me, it gives me power. But there's something he said here, which many people don't see. And that's why I'm a lawyer. I tend to look at words. It mm -hmm. gives me power in a way. It mm. gives me power in a way. That's what he says. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad and my mom separated. So I didn't have a lot of male energy in my home. And also I'm married to a family. He laughs. You know, not a lot of male energy going on there. It's pure woman coming you know, over the Kardashians. Right. It's beautiful though. But there are times where, you know, there's something about, you know, I love Hillary, he said. I love everyone. But the campaign, I'm with her, just yes. didn't make me feel as a guy. Yes. That didn't get to see my dad all the time. Mm. Now, like a guy that would play catch with his son, it was something about when I put this hat on, it made me feel like a Superman. You made a mm. Superman. Now, um, I ask you for your perspective, but how I see what he's saying right there is what a lot of fatherless young black men are actually longing for. They're mm -hmm. longing for that fatherhood figure. Mm. They're longing for someone that they can look up to. Hence the reason why the gangs mm -hmm. somewhat have that sort of control because they come in and say, I'll take care of you. I'll look up to you. Right. What kind of what she's actually saying right there is, and listen, I can see that deep down, Kanye West is searching. I can see deep down that he's got issues. But mm -hmm. I'm not going to be the one that's put him down for and I'm not going to be the one that kick him while he's right. 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 Yeah. It, so so what's your perspective of that statement there? That's, start, yeah. Yeah, that was very intriguing to hear Kanye West say that. And that is actually, I've mentored a lot of young men. That is actually the first step into manhood is admitting that you need another man to mentor, mentor you. That's what Kanye West is really searching for. And what's intriguing is kind of like the Boy Scouts. Why do boys go to Boy Scouts? It's because when you go to Boy Scouts, you learn how to make things. You learn how to start a fire. You learn how to sleep in the woods at night. And these are kind of passages or rites of passages to becoming a man. What I think appeals to Kanye is Trump's statement when he says, make America great again. That is a call to men and women, but mostly men, because for so long, our women has been leading the homes. For a black man, I grew up with a father and a mother in a home, but my story is like a fairy tale to black men. When I tell other young men that, they don't know what it feels like to have a father in a home that tells you no. Yes. That is why when they go out and they see a police officer that tells them no, their reaction is negative because yes. they never had a man in the home to say, no, you can't do that. And so, and I tell young men this all the time, the police are designed to protect and serve, but actually your father is the first person that's supposed to protect and serve you. So when yes. your father is removed, the next person in line is the police officer. And that's why our young men treat police officers as bad stepdads because they don't understand how does he have the authority to tell me what to do. Yeah. And so Kanye West, what's appealing to Kanye is making America great. That means he can participate in making his country great. And he's doing that with dialogue, with helping Chicago, with raising money for Flint, Michigan. So he said, and he said this in his speech, he said, we should want, to, want our president to be successful. We should want him to yeah. do well. And so that's what, that's what I think is appealing to him, is that father figure and making America great again. It's very interesting what you said right there about if he looks good, we look good. Because there was another person who was in the room, which nobody's talking about. Another <laughs> black man was in the room at the, at the, in the Oval Office, Jim right. Brown. You know, Jim right. Brown was there. And Jim Brown also said, we've got to make him look good. If he looks good, we've got good. You understand? That's true. But that, why is there no attack on Jim's ground? See, that, that, that is the thing. See, there is a, a, a... With Jim Brown, everyone knows that he has put in the time yes. and has taken the stripes to better our communities. They know mm -hmm. that Jim Brown 
loves black people and wants to see our young men do well. Yeah. They won't attack Jim Brown because he's considered one of our elders. But they will attack Kanye West because they consider him just as a peer or a brother. And yeah. so that's why I think it was very important that he was there. And he even came out and said, Trump intentions are pure. He really wants to help us. And we're missing an opportunity. And I think Jim Brown is going to be, Jim Brown and Kanye West together, I think will be a powerful tool to be able to help our communities. Listen, I, I believe in this policy. I believe that um, there are times we, we have to use each other. And I, I believe that it is time for persons to use the president. Okay. Many people say, well, he's just using us. Well, use the guy then. <laughs> use the guy. I mean, the Johnsons are happy for the release of their family. You cannot, yes. you, you, you cannot say anything to the Johnsons. They're really happy. Uh, and, and Hoover, if he gets out there, they're really going to be fantastically happy. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, Kanye West said something else. Well, I'm dissecting it. For me, also as a guy that looks up to you, looks up to Ralph Lauren, looks up to American industry guys, non-political, no exclusive. He said, put the beep on it. <laughs> How do yeah. you want to do it? Five seconds delay and just goes on it. Right now, you gave me the heart to go to Adidas because at Adidas, when I went in 2015, we were a 14 billion company losing two billion a year. Now we have a 38 billion market cap. It's called the Yeezy effect. Mm. Is this a madman? He doesn't sound like a madman to me. It's, he sounds like for the first time that he's actually talking some sense. That's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like that he is searching and he has found a way to help America become great. And if you look at this, I don't know if you've ever studied this before. If you go and study Black Wall Street, there is a group um, that came about, um, I believe it was around the 50s, called Black Wall Street. It was yeah. a group of black people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was a group of black people that started businesses and had a booming economy. Well, the Democrats came in and destroyed that. Kanye West is trying to create that again. But the only way we're going to get it is if we have a seat at the table with Trump. And not only just Trump, he's not the only thing that we, we have to look forward to, but he's a part of the puzzle. We had a black man in office for eight years that did absolutely nothing for the black community. And he gets a pass. But here it is, Trump is asking the black community, saying, come, I want to help. But we reject that help because we hate the man in the party. You, you know what, Patrick, I... I admire Barack Obama, and um, I like Barack Obama. I had two parties um, when Barack Obama was inaugurated, when he when he got the first thing. I had big parties over in the UK for it. I, I organized mm -hmm. two massive things there for him. But I say to people many times, and they don't like when I say, I said Barack Obama was a screensaver. <laughs> now, anybody who understands what a screensaver is, a screensaver, I'm looking at my computer now, and if I take my eyes off it for a while, a little fish thing comes across it, makes it look nice. But if mm -hmm. I shake the keyboard bit, the reality kicks into play. So mm -hmm. this is what I say. Trump didn't make America racist in the day when he said he was going to be president. Mm -hmm. What Trump did was shake the screen <laughs> and reveal, <laughs> like Charles Gambino, this is America. Who, right. This is America. And yeah. I believe that in, in any situation, in any where there's a problem, you first have to accept that there is a problem before you can fix it. That's well, true. And, and many persons, and I believe this, because someone said to me the other day, they said, uh, Kanye West is not the leader of the black community. Where did he find himself in that position? And I said, that's our problem. We keep trying to find a leader to lead us. Yes. Where we should be actually leading ourselves. Yes. Respect. And that was one of the things that Abraham Lincoln actually um, said. He actually, him and Frederick Douglass had a conversation. And he asked Frederick Douglass, he said, okay, after we free the slaves, what should we do? What should the government give them? And Frederick Douglass said, nothing. Let them alone. Leave them alone. 
they will find their own way. And Frederick Douglass knew way back then that if the government interfered on black people finding their themselves and finding their way in America, that they would become slaves again. And so I think it's the same thing today. We don't need all of these leaders that we say that are leaders. Mm -hmm. What we need, we have a constant, what we need, we already have. And that is the constitution that frees us to do what's in our heart, the pursuit of happiness, as it says. And so that's what I think is a problem. For years, we've looked for, and I think that's actually where hip hop came from. Yeah. Because when, when Martin Luther King was killed, no one else stepped up. All of the preachers went back into their churches and it was like, I don't want to be assassinated. And as soon as he was killed, the 1970s hit and you saw black men leading themselves, started throwing parties in the Bronx. And today we have a hip hop culture because there was no mentorship in that. It was just young men doing what they thought was right. And so today it has morphed into a lot of the gangster rap where young men calling girls bees and all type of names. It is morphed into misogyny, it's morphed into violence, it's morphed into all of these things because we have no real leadership or no constitution or document to guide us. And so I think going forward, um, Kanye West will be looked back at, we'll look back at this in history and see that his boldness actually freed a lot of young men to say, you know what, I can think differently. I don't have to stay in the projects my whole life. I don't have to vote Democrat. I don't have to be a part of these programs. I can create. I'm a man. And I think that's what we're going to look back in history and see. It, it is very interesting what, you, what you're saying there. And, uh, and someone in America will reach out to me and say, well, Silver, you don't understand what is really happening over there. And that's one of the reasons I said, well, let me call someone who is over there to speak mm -hmm. instead of me just speaking. And, uh, and someone sent me this message today and said, uh, Silver, perhaps you need to read a bit more. Trump wants to isolate America so that he can pursue his plans to make America great again. Now, when we hear the word America great again, many people are saying that that is to make America white. But I said, well, America wasn't white in the first place. So can right. it be white again? Right. You know? And he said, those who live in the U.S. know it's a code for making America white. That's what the person said. It means halting the immigration of colored and increasing immigration from the European nations. And listen to this. Now, I I'm reading what somebody sent to me. Many mm -hmm. pregnant Russian women are having their babies in America now, staying at Trump properties between delivery, while the brown kids at the southern border are being separated from their parents and housed in tent camps. Bro, what's going on? What's that? And see, and this is where uh, the left try to menace words. If you notice, they said the Russians are there having their children. And then they mentioned the brown kids coming across the border. That's where you have legal and illegal immigration. Yes. So most people trump those, put those together, legal immigration and illegal immigration. No, there are many brown people that are here, and even Hispanics. I've talked to them. There are Hispanics and Mexicans that, are, that have come here legally that yes. don't want other Mexicans and other Hispanics to come here illegally. They had to learn our constitution. They had to learn our history, learn all of the presidents, and they have a league. They are legal Americans now. And when they see people pouring across the border, they're asking Trump, please do something about this. Please help us. And the Russians that come here, they come here legally. And so yeah. what Trump is trying to do, he is trying to create a process to where the people that come here come here in a legal way. Yes. We can't just have open borders. Democrats right now are fighting for open borders. And like Trump say, if you have no borders, you have no country. And so mm -hmm. when he says make America great again, he's putting America first. And so mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, that person that sent you that message, they have a warped view of what's really happening. Trump is really trying to put America first. And that's why our economy is doing so well right now. Yeah. Now, now, Kanye West mentioned something here about bipolar disorder and uh, mental health. Uh, uh, he said, 
what I think is we don't need sentences. We need pardon. We need to talk to people. Is what he said. I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I was connected with neuropsychologist that works with the athletes in the NBA and NFL. And he looked at my brain. He's equal in three parts. The key point here is saying he accepts and he recognizes he had mental health disorder. Now, Patrick, uh, yesterday there was a mental health day in the UK and everybody was saying, call a friend, look out for somebody, you know what I mean? Just because they smile with you doesn't mean to say they're okay. You know, get off the phone on social media, speak to someone. Mm -hmm. Now, many people are saying that this gentleman, Ken West, has mental health issues and he's poorly. But if somebody has mental health issues and is poorly, is mm -hmm. that how you treat such a person? Bullying such a person? Wow. That's a, that's a great point. That is a really good point. Because if Kanye West does have a mental issue, then why is the black community attacking him? Why is the black community crucifying him and dragging him to, through the mud? Would it be safe to say the black community doesn't care about people with mental health? And I want to be honest. I actually believe that for the first time, Kanye West is actually, is the medicine that he's taking is helping him be, get in his right mind. Yeah. I actually believe he's starting to think for himself, to critically think, and even question some mm. of the things that he's done in his past. Yes. He yes. said that. They asked him about George Bush. They said, well, Kanye, why would you say that George Bush hates black people? Why would you say that? Yes. And then now you're sitting here with Trump. And he said, well, when I think about it back in that time, I was being controlled by the <clears throat> welfare mentality. I can read it. I read it. I read yes. the script. Read that. He said, the reporter said, so you had said at President Bush that he doesn't care about black people. And you have heard some people say that about this president. What do you, how do you respond to that? What do you make of that? This is what West said. I think we need to care about all people. And I believe that when I went on NBC, I was very emotional and I was programmed to think from a victimized mentality, yes. a welfare mentality. And he said, go further. I think that we blacks and African-Americans, we really get caught up in the idea of racism over the idea of industry. We say if people don't have land, they settle for brands. Now, this is powerful because right now in the black community, what you hear a lot about is brands. Yes. If you dare fall trap and go on to Instagram, you see everybody parading brands, their body. Brand, brand, brand. And right. Said, we want polar sporting Obama again. That's what I said. That's what they want. Yeah. Polar sporting Obama again. We want a brand more than we want land. Wow. Brand more than we want land because we haven't known how it feels to actually have our own land and have ownership of our own blocks. Patrick, is this a madman speaking? That is not a madman. That sounds like a critical thinker that's beginning to understand how economics work. When I was in Africa for a month, I traveled to Cameroon, Africa for a month. I went and talked on radio stations in Africa. And this is what every radio personality told me. They said, why does America only want to send us aid? We All we want is to be able to trade. We don't yeah. need the aid. We want to be able to trade. So even in Africa, the Africans who were colonized are now saying, giving, just giving us money and programs is not helping our continent. Yeah. But we need to learn economics and learn industry, like Kanye West is saying, and learn how to trade. This is what our young people is missing. Kanye West is on to something. Yeah. He's on to something. And I think we're going to miss an opportunity if we continue to trash him and drag him through the mud. Because he has an opportunity to get our young people to maybe think differently than they would if they had not... Um, come in contact with him. Yeah. And he went further by saying, so so when you don't have ownership, then it's all about how something looks. Mm. It's about the patina. It's not about the soul. It's not about the core. So we focus more on, is somebody wearing something? Is someone disrespecting so I got to shoot them? Or the idea of someone being racist? Wow.
Well, you know, I, I tell you this. You know, I, I tell you this. There's so much more we could go on, but I, you know, we're gonna stop shortly. But yeah. w w what I pick up really, and, and you know, I listen. I like to really listen. Everybody, listen. I listen to the left. I listen to the right. You know, what I mean, mm -hmm. I listen. To, you know, and I like to dissect things. You know, and uh, you know, uh, you know. Listen, I'm not one of those intellectuals. You know, I don't have the mm -hmm. time. I'm not an intellectual. I'm just yeah. that straight. You know, what I mean, <laughs> I, I just you know, life is too short. You understand? <laughs> and, and there are some, and and I think we complicate things so much, Patrick. Mm -hmm. And and there are sometimes things which are so very simple that we miss it because we over intellectualize it and we become mm -hmm. stupid. Mm -hmm. You know, and what I'm seeing right here is some mechanism because I know young a gentleman named by the name of um, um, Julian Hall. He's an entrepreneur. He's training young children to become entrepreneurs from the age of nine, ten, eleven, twelve. He's he's training them about owning things, having mm -hmm. things. They are creating things. They are not talking about software just by that. They are talking about mm -hmm. making cakes, creating T-shirts, creating things. Right. That's why I noticed. I noticed that the president said something recently. And, and listen, I call every president of America president, right? right. I, I have no disrespect for presidents, I, 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 the office. And Trump said something. He said, they resist, we create. Wow. And he said, we are the promise keepers. We keep our promise. Mm. You know? And, and, and when I think of those things, I really truly believe that America is missing a fundamental opportunity to mm. use this president. Take him mm. by his words. You see, in the Christian world, as you know, in Christian yeah. you, say, you take the Bible and you use the word and you remind the Lord of his word. Yes. <laughs> you know? use, yeah. what, use the word, you know? Right. And, and, and my analysis is this. The day when Trump won, that gentleman in the Democratic um, uh, auditorium, he said to the people, go home and we'll sort out what is happening. The mm. people went home and they haven't gone back to the auditorium yet. They're still waiting to go back to hear that Hillary has won. They yes. have not accepted that Trump has won. And that is mm. why every opportunity Americans are trying to get at Trump. Kavanaugh wasn't about the truth with Ford. It was about Trump. It was about Trump. That's Can't true. Wait. This is not about Kanye West. It's about Trump. Mm, that's true. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I'll say this. The last time this happened was to Abraham Lincoln. Yes. When Abraham Lincoln won, the other side did not accept loss. And they started a war where 600,000 men died because they couldn't accept election results. My prayer is that that does not happen in America. Yes. But what I'm seeing, the hatred for Trump, the the vitriol on social media, the attacks on Kanye West is not looking very very good. But sensible people like you and I need to have conversations like this where people can look on and figure out a way to have these dialogues and move our nation forward. Yeah. Uh, someone just said, this program is biased because you only have a conservative speaker. Uh, I want to say to the person, I've never ever had a conservative speaker on it before. <laughs> Everyone, I'm the first one. Did I make yeah, history? Yeah, I never had a conservative. You know, it's always a left. You know, you know. So, so I'm being criticized now. You know, and listen, I tell people all the while, I don't care about left or right or cons. I say to people first, I'm still Burn City first. Mm -hmm. Straight out of Ochi. Ochi is a place in Jamaica. Ochi is. I, <laughs> if you don't know Jamaica, I'll send you to Jamaica one day. Go to Ochi. Yeah. Hey, I'll have to call. come down here and meet you. Yeah, I'm calling my name. You know? <laughs> so, so I'm straight out of Ochi, you know? And this guy here, D. Constantine, seems he just um, gets on my nerves sometimes. No disrespect. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen I, I don't have the time anymore to lots of these long, drag out discussions and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, we, we've got to make it very simple. Now, I believe very fundamentally that my thought process and my thinking is of a conservative leaning. Yes? Mm -hmm. yes. And I'm not going to try to, people know me now, you understand? So I'm not going to try to polish it up or try to be diplomatic. Right. In and I believe what you're doing is also powerful. So therefore, if, you know, there, there's a thing called the black element, which I created. The black element is this. You find a common denominator and you capitalize on it. 
So mm. therefore, it could be someone who is a Labour, someone who is democratic. You find the common ground, and then you build on it. Yes. Simple that, as that. Yeah, that is the way forward. That is how you develop a community. Yes. Is that you have both sides. We may not agree on everything, but let's find one thing that we agree on and capitalize. And that's one step forward in a better direction for the community. Awesome. So any, any last words, Patrick? <laughs> hey, I just want to thank you for having me on. It's just wonderful that technology allows us to do this. I know it's like late night there where you are. What time is it there? It's now 23.02. Wow. So that's like, what, 11 o'clock? 11, yeah, sorry, 11, yeah. 11 so, so it's, you know, I'm in the early evening here, but technology allows us to do this. But I think we need to have more conversations like this with people around the world. And so I appreciate you for having me on. Yeah, definitely. And we'll get Candy on and, and all those other guys on as well. Might as well we just do it. Everybody just let's walk away, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Patrick, listen, thank you to you and the family and all the best from the UK here. And, um, you know, let's just keep... Um, you know, you know, I think this is what I would more say. Let's keep building each other. Let's yeah. build each other as much as possible. You know, I believe that a soft answer turns out to wear wrath. Yes, and sure. I believe that a positive word can be that injection that is that medicine for someone. I believe that negative derogatory words words are harmful. And our children now are all over internet, all over social media. Right. And they're watching. And that is why sometimes I say to persons that I will not have these sort of discussions with yourself. Because if my mother find out that I'm actually talking to someone like you, she would be ashamed. <laughs> and that's why I find it very easy to block people and get rid of mm -hmm. them out of my space if they're rude and derogatory. Because I don't think we have to please everyone in this world, Patrick. So that's I'm true. encouraging you as well to um, do what you're doing and, um, and let's get our backs so, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate you for having me on. Okay. Easy, buddy. Respect. All right, all right. Thank you, sir. Cheers. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So I've had uh, uh, Patrick Hampton uh, from the United States of America, and uh, that was really a powerful discussion. Now, I, I want to bring on um, Mr. Lester. Lester, if you're around, um, I want to, want to wrap up with you, Lester. Let me see if I can find you. Um, Lester Gale. If I can find Lester Gale to come on to the show and um, for the final moments, just to sort of, uh, because they say that I keep bringing in uh, uh, Lester, calling Lester, shouting out. Lester, how are you doing? I am great, Silbert. How are you? Well, I hope I hope you are not conservative because I've been accused of of having a one sided argument. I hope you say something different. You know what I'm saying? I I, I saw these comments, but I mean, um, you, you can't please everybody. Yes. You know. You just have to be. You just have to be silver, and you just have to be you. Yes, yes, yes. So tell me, where are you from now? Where are you based now? You're in somewhere in Europe. You're in Brexit. Are we Brexiting from where you are? Are you trying to come to the UK? <laughs> <laughs> I would love, I would love to come and join you in in the fight. Yeah, but but you're you're in Netherlands, isn't it? Yes, I'm in Holland. Yes, in the Netherlands. Yeah. Now, 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 Lester, um, the discussion that we had a while ago, we were talking, we have been talking a while about the the level of um, vitriol that we throw at each other. What's your perspective on it, um, as as well, given uh, from a, from a Jamaican perspective as well? Yeah. Um, and, and the problem is not um, entirely just uh, uh, Jamaican, but what I'm seeing more is like it's 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 some um, race, you yeah. know. And uh, like for instance, I work in a multicultural organization presently, and the persons there that have issues with each other mostly are the black people, you know we find things to bicker about and fight about and hate each other about. Mm -hmm. And when I look at all our European um, co-workers, and you have persons from Russia, and if you know the history of Russia and the history of Germany in Europe, right? The, the damage that Russia and Germany has done in Europe, it's not pretty. But these persons get along. 
they don't make any fuss with each other. They don't necessarily like each other, but you don't hear them public. I've never heard these separate European nations who work with each other, bash each other or curse each other. Never. Never. But, but let, let, me, let, let me take it to this point. Let, let us go to America situation with, with Kanye or with, 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 with Kanye. They yeah. have the First Amendment. And the First Amendment should exempt them from saying the things that they are saying about Kanye because he has the right for freedom of speech. He has the right to, to express himself. He has the right to live and support who he wants to support. That, that, that is supposed to be the democratic process of America. And they're, they're telling him that if he is not saying what they are saying, right, he's wrong and he's sick and he's stupid and he's all, all the worst things. So if he can't think and make a choice for himself as a, as a black man, they're not calling other white Republicans sick and mentally ill. Either. Yes. You, you see what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. And, 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 he's not, and he didn't vote for Republican. He didn't even vote. Right, but he made clear distinctions of why he supports Trump, very clear. And we're and and, and, and not, not not we, they are calling him the most ridiculous and nasty and 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 and, and in sickening names. And these are supposed to be persons who say they are better than Kanye, they are brighter than Kanye. They they have. And the interests of the black community at heart. But who else from the black community, who else from the superstar, from the athlete community is standing up as Kanye West is doing? Who yes. else? Yes, yes. You see, um, one of the things I see a lot of it is, is jealousy as well, because um, where persons may be not invited to the White House or maybe not in the right space but anyway you know it, it's 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 really unfortunate Lester um and I, I see D Constantine seem just criticizing everything which we are talking here now and um that's that's what kind of what we call that negative energy yes D I'm calling yes. you negative energy I don't care what you think um just call it as it is um you know and everything is from a perspective you know we we you know, people talk about sometimes you have to have evidence. You know, the evidence that we have sometimes is what we know and what we are going through and our experience. You know, your experience yes. in, in where you are is saying something. My experience where I'm at is saying something. Patrick's experience where he's at is saying something. Then somebody will come mm -hmm. out of the blue, like Deke, saying, Where is your evidence? For Pete's sake, get a life, mate. You know, you know, I'm just being straight up with that. I'm just getting fed up with foolishness yes. question. Yes. Now, you know, just call a spade a spade, you know. So D, I'm 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 happy to say. To, to leave the page of anything. I've no, I've no, I have no apologies for that. Let's deal with some exactly. issues here now. We got issues here now whereby we've got leaders, black people in power, fighting and bickering, calling each other's names, cussing each other, using names derogatory, names which were, which white people would get arrested for, but finding it easy yeah. to do so, yes. and actually on main stations like CNN. If it's I CNN. dare start. This, if I dare start to say anything on this platform here now, well, I'm, if people know my position that I, I'm not a rude person, I just tell you to to say bye bye. <laughs> I mean, yes, you know. Yes. Yes. But but it, it's very unfortunate, um, you know, Lester. But 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 do you remember the the silence of the white panelist on CNN? He just sat there and looked. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, <laughs> he just like, and you can see in his face, he's like, "Wow, really, really." Yes, yes. you know, and and he may not agree with with, with Kanye, but to, to 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 the levels what what they are going at, mm -hmm. you know. But 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 let us let let us take something in consideration to show how mature Kanye West is. When Beyonce was up for the same amount of awards um, that Taylor Swift was up for, and Beyonce had, had a, a better album, better sales, better everything, but they gave it to Taylor Swift. 
Kanye yeah. went up on the stage and interrupt the program and say, it's Beyonce should get this, blah, blah, blah. You don't deserve this, right? Trump called him out on it. Trump yeah. said Kanye was this and Kanye was that. You know, Trump said that. Now, Kanye, Kanye heard that, but Kanye hasn't hold that against Trump. Trump is in a different space now. He is the president of the United States. Now, you have to deal with issues on that level now. You can't yeah. go back to say, well, this guy called me this, so I'm not going to speak to him. No. And remember, Trump, Trump supported Taylor Swift. Yeah. Taylor Swift now is supporting the Democrats. And guess what? Do we hear Republicans? Do we hear white Republicans calling her nasty names? Nobody's calling her any names because she's exercising her freedom of expression, her freedom of exactly. choice. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and the question is, why is it wrong or why is it difficult for uh, black persons to exercise their chosen choice of political parties, political candidates, and all those sort of things, you know? And, 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 and therefore, and that's one of the reasons why I'm toning down some unnecessary chatter. Yeah, the, the negative energy. Yeah, turning down the negative energy. I mean, I can have, you know, I can have discussions and this, uh, but when it comes on to another level, because right now, as, as I keep saying, you, you have in, the, in London now, you, you have a possibility of a, a, a black man to be the mayor of... of mayor. And uh, it's good. But just because he's black, that's not the reason. But give him a, a fair opportunity. Give him a fair yes. opportunity in a way so he can aspire. Because it would be so great to our children to see exactly. a, a, a exactly. mayor who is a black man straight out of Amos Smith, a, a son of Windrush at a time like this. Yes. But no, he's conservative. He's a coon. He's a Tory. He's an Uncle Tom. He's a... So who who are saying these things? Are, 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 are the white persons in, in London saying these things? Nah, 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 of course not. It's all people saying. <laughs> That's surprising. Listen, white people are not going to say those things because they won't call them off a racist. Racist. Exactly. You know? Exactly. But, but, but anyway, um, let, let's, let's wrap it up there. But, but I just wanted you to come on and just share that bit there. But um, as far as I'm concerned, really, ladies and gentlemen, I, I think it is very important that we actually really encourage and empower people. Um, people say being nice and in politics is not a good thing. You won't get any far. Nobody will vote for you. But I said sometimes you're going to forget about votes and have dignity and yes. integrity and respect. Yes. 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 It's, it's, it's because, I mean, you can't lose your humanity because of politics. Yes. Right? You, 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 you have to still remain um, the core essential person you are and, and and want what you what 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 you what each person essentially want for themselves and their family, yes. right? You are to aspire to want that in other per persons also, and to see that in other persons also. Now, the, the, the funny thing, the thing that hurt me is that I have been also in entertainment, and persons have criticized me publicly. You know, I, I I've been I've been through the, the fire, right? And um. My kids hear these things. My mom hear these things, all right? So imagine that these well-thinking Black Americans who are say, and, 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 and co-workers, peers of Kanye West, are saying these things about Kanye. He has a daughter. He has a wife. Yes. He has family members. But nobody takes this in consideration that they may may not just be hurting Kane, but they, but but it, but it's all is all the extension of Kane. Uh, the, 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 uh, I think the gentleman called Ti, that rapper, he unfriended yeah. Kanye West. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so it's so childish. I mean, it's, it's petty. So, it's so what happened to the comrade where, whereby we just call each other aside. Listen, Lester, ladies and gentlemen, Lester sometimes is a guy that cuts some bad words sometimes. You know what I mean? And I, instead of me having a go at Lester publicly, I inbox him and message him. You exactly. Know? exactly. And, and we can always have this discussion. And Lester, and, and Lester know when he's speaking to me, there are certain words he's going to use. Am I right, boss? <laughs> exactly. You're, you're right. But, 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 yeah. but, the, but the thing is that I have the same problem 
with my people that Kanye West has. Yeah. Because my, my, my line of thinking, because I said Trump, Trump was going to win. Yeah. I said that from earlier. I don't know if you remember. From early, early out, I said Trump was going to win. Yeah. And everybody started saying that, oh, they started to call me the worst. These are friends who, who know, it's not just Facebook friends, but friends who really know me. Yeah. I'm, saying, I, I'm saying, look, I'm not saying that he's going to be the best president. All I'm saying is that this guy is going to win. That's all I'm yeah. saying. And, and, and I'm saying, no, it's possible that he will win a second term. But let us look at something what Trump did. Trump, mm -hmm. since ascending to the office, has brought in his gang, his friends, persons who can support him and support his bills. Right? Mm -hmm. He is doing stuff for his community, his, his, his people. But he has also extended, he has also extended an olive branch to brown and blacks in the United States and said, hey, come. Yes. Let us talk. And then the blacks are saying, we will not talk to you. Yes. <laughs> that, 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 that is what they're saying. That's what Patrick we was saying a while ago. Yes. Yes. So I'm saying, if you're not at the table, how can you get things fixed? You know, because what's, what's going to be left is persons who don't look like you and I mm. in, in England, in the United States, in Jamaica, in wherever, making decisions for us who don't look like us, who have not been through things that we have been through, who don't feel the same pain and, 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 and experiences like us. So yeah. these people are going to make decisions based on what they think. But when you have persons who have a connection who are from our community at the table, then we can start to see that, hey, okay, the, things are things are, are, are changing slowly. Mm. But 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 we are shutting ourselves out. Yeah. We yeah. we are the ones who shut in the door on ourselves. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right about that. You're right about that. And and, and let me go further. Kane said something today. And you, you brought it up earlier. But let me give you some stats. Yeah. Let me give you some stats. The black community in the United States in 2017 spent $2.2 billion on Air Jordans. Yeah. On Air Jordans, brands. Yes. Now, they also spent 35% more on Mercedes Benz in 2017 than their white counterparts in the same, same income bracket. Mm. But you have more white persons who are acquiring property, acqu um, opening business, you know, um, um, getting land, real estate, something tangible other than brands. And that's, that's the point we, Kanye West was mentioning a while ago. Exactly. About people don't have lands, but they're owning brands. <laughs> owning brands. Yeah. You know, so what, what do we really want? We, because this guy bought a thousand acres of land. Mm. And he's got Kanye is going to build housing for black people. Mm. And he, he said he said he's looking for 2,000 acres now. Yes, yes. So these are the things. And, and, and the thing is that the funny thing is that the head guy for one of the head designers for Nike, right? Was Kanye West, was one of Kanye West's employees. Yes. A black guy. Right, and he has many guys who are on his team are working in high fashion areas, like that they are running huge departments for fashion companies, and these guys are black guys. Kanye West made that possible. Yes, but what I'm saying, nobody's mentioning that. Was he crazy yes. to, to yes. give these guys who never had certain experience give them the chance to develop, to grow, to blossom, and you know, Ralph Lauren can see them, um, um, Dolce & Gabbana can see them, Nike can see them. So this is yeah. what I'm saying. So, so we, we, we pick the worst things to say yeah. about our own. Yes, yes. Right? So, 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 what you, so, what, so what you're saying right there then is simply this. We have a choice of what we want to actually build upon. We can build upon the negative and tear down and rip apart, which we find very easy to do. Very Someone easy. Just Celestial Ferguson just said, why is it that this race is always the one to look backward and not forward? That's the point we need to address in this era. 
why why is that because you rightly say right there we have a choice to look at the yeah. positives the building aspects of Kanye West and to bring him up or to look at the negative bit and to tear him down yes and why but, do we but, choose negative so easy why why we why 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 are we like that <laughs> but, 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 because it's it's it's, it's easier it's easier. Yeah. And then the, the thing about it is that we see it in our communities yeah. right across the board. Right? Because do you know any prominent white gang names? Think about it. Prominent white gangs. Do you know any? No, I don't know. That comes up to me. Yeah? Even though there might be some. The craze years ago. <laughs> well, not, but, but you know the Crips. The, yeah, the Crips. Yeah, I was saying the craze. Um, years ago in the UK. So. Yeah, but, but you know the Crips, you know the Bloods. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, but, but what I'm saying that you, we easily, easily tear down each other, right? Because we don't trust each other. Yes, yes. We don't try to build each other. And But, but you always said this to me also, forgiveness. Mm. Forgiveness, mm. right? Now, we don't see the black community saying, okay, Kanye may have said something out of place. He's our brother. We're going to forgive him. Yes. No, let us take away his blackness. I don't understand that statement. Yes, yes. I, I hear it a lot of times. They're going to excommun excommunicate him from the black race. But they said the same thing about OJ Simpson. Yes, yes. They said they, they criticized Tiger Woods for not being, too, not being black enough. They criticized... Michael Jordan yeah. for not for, for not being vocal with his with his power and influence for not being vocal on black issues, mm. and 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 the, th the the current thread in all of that is that we always as a as a race as a community want somebody to stand up for us. Yes, and Kanye is saying, look, stand up for yourselves. Let us all stand up together for ourselves. Yes. don't sit back and wait for one person yes. to stand up all of us. Yes, because when when that person is gone, like like Obama is gone now, what now? What? We get we get the rights. The, the, there's no more screensaver. <laughs> I love that analogy. <laughs> I love that analogy. Many people right? don't like it when I say. Many people don't like it when I say that Obama was a screensaver. They get annoyed. I said no. Obama actually polished things over. You know, but Trump actually shake up the computer and say, this is America. Whoop, whoop. You know, like Charles Gambino. This is America. <laughs> whoop, whoop. This is the reality. And, exactly. And, 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 and the reason why, you know, I, I get accused sometimes by a person who keeps saying to me that uh, I should not talk on American issues. But, you know, um, that's where I keep keep forgetting that there's a freedom of expression, freedom of speech, whereby we're living in this global world, Lester, you know what I'm saying? Totally global, we can speak on anything, anywhere, anytime. Somebody said that to me recently. A lot of people said that to me, even my family and friends in the US said, yeah. You see, people cussing me all the while about, about um, American politics, right? Yeah. And you know, my answer to that is America's foreign policy affects me, yes, right? So, until America stops making policies that affect other countries in the world, then you in America can say we, we must not comment on American policies. Because I don't know any other country in the world that makes international, that makes policies that affect other countries in the world, as yes, America yes. do. Yes. Right? So we have a right, we have a vested interest in what happens, right, in, um, um, in Washington. Yes. We do. Def definitely. Let's look at a couple of the, the comments here. Um, Enchanter Joseph said, did Kanye West not have a mental breakdown some time ago? Perhaps people are thinking he has not recovered fully. Those who possibly don't understand mental health fully, we live in a cruel world. And we can answer to that, yes. And he, he actually said it, that he had yes. a breakdown. Um, but as Patrick was saying, it's like, listen, <laughs> he's going through a process, you know? But why through yes. a process? It's like brilliance. And I mean, sometimes he's saying some things and I'm saying, Whoa, you missed me right there, Kenny. You're going on great, yeah, but yeah. something just missed me yeah. and then you just click back into gear. You know what I'm saying? You like it, like yeah. like a little miss gear. But but yes. I have the time for it. And and this is it. As as Enchanter said, 
uh, people don't understand mental health fully. You've got to be patient. You've got to understand somebody. And you've got to, yeah. sometimes you've got to make sense. Even sometimes I'm saying things, sometimes I said, I don't know what I said right there. Anybody make sense out of that? You know what I'm saying? Um, D. Jones said, the Brits all up in our Kool Aid and didn't know our flavor. <laughs> the Brits all up in our Kool Aid and don't know the flavor. Um, Sherry Scott, he has a right to express his own thoughts. Mike Rickett is saying there's an agenda to make Kanye West look crazy because he's bucking the system and breaking the mold. Someone wanting to shut up and get back in his shack. I'm reminded yes. of Bill Cosby somewhat slightly, you know. Somewhat reminded of Bill Cosby there, even though Bill Cosby sort of went off but some of the things he was saying. You see, like when somebody yes. come to break the mold, he's moving away from the typical uh, demonstration, the typical... Um, Angry black man. Yeah, yeah. And he, he's yeah. coming now and said, let's, let's go through. When, when the guys were saying, Kenny was, I don't like you, man. Kenny was saying, come, brother, let me hug you. I'm yes. sorry, and I'm sorry. Let me hug you. You know, and he said, "Let me hug you." Yes, yes. Um, at 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 um at 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 uh, TMZ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, um, somebody somebody else is saying that. Look at Bill Cosby. What happened? Remember that you have to always be in your line. I mean, Celeste you just said that point, which I yes. just flagged up. Got to stay yes. in line. Cannabis means well for black people. He's trying to give credit where credit is due. And trying to do it personally, I listened to full clip with Kanye and Dum Dum and <laughs> Dum Dum. <laughs> and I revised my opinion a bit. He made some points that can be developed, you know. Um, so, you know, as you can see, you know, bless them, we have a job to do at the same time to somewhat, uh, you know, dissect some of these information and, yes. and speak it out. And, you know, what Lester was saying, oh, I, I blocked Lester just for your information. And ladies and gentlemen, mean, I have D. no apologies for that. You know. Uh, you mean D? D, D, sorry, D, yeah, D, yeah. D, I, I just blocked him because yeah. I, I consider trolling, I consider that, um, what should I say, distraction. When, when you see those things coming in there, you got to call a spade a spade, yeah. But still, it's either your suggestions are a part of the problem or a part of the solution. Yeah. You can't want to be both. You have to yeah. decide what you want to do. Kanye yeah. is not looking at making excuses for the problems. He's looking at how best I can have solutions, how best I can find ways to solve the problems. But he, and, and this is the thing that, that, that I am saddened about with the rappers and yeah. the actors, especially the rappers. This crazy guy, right? Kanye has always been like this, right? But yeah. he's more popular now, but he has always been like this. He has produced and written songs for all these rappers. He has yeah. made them far more money than, than before he used to produce it. He has produced so many of them, yeah. but nobody's talking about that, right? But yeah. when he was the Kanye speaking of, of um, girls ass and um, nigger this and the, all these things, he was he was the man, he was cool. Now he's saying, he's speaking on a political platform, he's speaking to the president, he's speaking on social issues for his people. He has made Adidas close factories in China and bringing them onshore in the US. Wow. Not just in, in certain, um, 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 uh, uh, rural areas but he's bringing the the, 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 the factories wow in wow. 2018 they've opened 15 factories wow I, making I... Yeezys, making his his, his his apparel right but he has he has brought factories to chicago wow to chicago and can i said today if we don't empower and employ black men of the community right We'll all, we'll all, all we're going to do is create, is going back to zero, where the black men are going to feel disenfranchised, commit crimes, go to prison. Why? The black family is broken up again. He said that. Nobody's reporting on that. Yes. Is, is, that, is, that, is that a statement of a madman? I right. want to empower and keep the black family together, put fathers back with their children? Well, my philosophy is that um, there are many mediums which have been created, like myself, and therefore, like yourself, what you speak and you articulate, 
and we just have to do it instead of waiting for anyone to make it happen. Lester. Exactly. Um, so exactly. I, I'm one of the persons always when people say, "Oh, you'll never see the mainstream um, broadcasting this," always say, "But well, you are broadcasting it. <laughs> just broadcast yeah. and share it." You know what I mean? Exactly. And stop worrying about mainstream and all those other things. Let us make the mainstream what we have now. Lester, listen. Yes. Well, thank you so much for coming on, buddy. And um, no problem. And, and we'll do it again. Um, and keep sharing and keep doing the good news. And uh, oh, and by the way, uh, I think this this gentleman named Shelton, who is the guy, the footballer from Jamaica, who is sick. Oh, uh, Luton Shelton. Yeah, explain a bit about what what's happening with him if you can share that. He he has a rare disease um, that that, and he's just thirty two years old. Yeah, who is who is he? Explain who is he again? Who is he? he he's a striker for for the for the Jamaica football. Well, a former striker for the Jamaica football team. Yes, and he has he has been diagnosed with a, a rare disease for the last um, couple of couple of years now. Yes, but um, he doesn't have the necessary resources, and you know the football um, in uh, uh, organization in Jamaica is not like that in Europe or in the UK, where you know there's insurance, there's this union, there's it's it's, it's nothing like that. So he has to basically face his medical um, bills. Um, bills. Yeah. On his own, and he they have basically run out of out of money. So the the, the government of Jamaica, um, through the Ministry of, of of Sports and Culture, has given him five million dollars, the family five million dollars to assist with um, the medical um, um, treatment. So yeah. that, that is a step in the, in, in the positive um, light, and we do hope and 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 pray for a speedy recovery. Yes, and that I mean. I don't know how 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 much he will get back to being what Luther mean? Shelton of old, but he doesn't have to live a, a very poor or deteriorating life. Yes, you know. So and his wife, his wife is very good. who's standing by him and his father as well. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, and, yes. and also, I think they're talking about a GoFundMe thing. I put it up on FFBJ yeah. page, and I'll share yes. it again. You know, because you see, this is the thing I'm talking about. This is the thing I'm talking about. We've got as much as possible. To really build each other, <laughs> yes. we, we can yes. have differences, ladies and gentlemen. We can differ in many different ways, but as I said before, the black element is finding that common ground and how we can build each other. And I tell you, if we build each other as a community, as a black community, man, the Bible talks about when they came together as one. They almost wanted to build this big, massive building to reach to... To this guy, yeah. And, and, yes. God, and God said, let me confuse them and let them all speak in different tongues because said, mm-hmm. when the people come together as one, one, and it's a principle in a Leicester, it's, it's, not, it's, a, it's, a, it's a principle, it's a spiritual principle. You don't have to be in the church. It always talk about when people come together as one, what they can do. And yeah. this is what we want the black community to do. This is what this is about. This is not about me being a conservative or a person being a left. It's about how we as a people, how we as black people can actually work together, finding the differences that we have. Nothing is wrong with that. Learning the art. This is art, the art of disagree. How to learn to disagree and just decide. To, mm-hmm. Listen, sometimes people wonder why am I leaving some arguments sometimes on some discussion. I say, listen, because... There's nowhere more to go. You say, yes. Yes, I mean, so let's agree to disagree and move on. It's not because yes. you're yapping on yes. us. We have a picnic for feed now and, you know, and go but, read the book. <laughs> but the, 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 the thing, personally, what I yes. mean, you saw that recently I, I brought my children to Europe. Oh, yes, yes. And, yes. Yeah. And um, my daughter is 20, my son is 19. Yes. Um, but you look like 21. 20. What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> 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 the, the, the good Jamaican breeze. Yeah. Black don't crack. Black don't crack. So, yeah, black don't crack. <laughs> you know, but the thing is that I am teaching my, my, my children that, that same value. You know? Yes. It is easier because of how, how Holland is set up, and I, I'm not sure about other European countries, but my children are eligible to get housing for themselves. Yes. So my daughter could get a house, my son could get a house for himself. But I said to them, listen, let us build together under one roof, yes. right? Because we have seen examples of the Indians do it, the Chinese do it, right? Other The Jews do it, other nations do it. They stick together. Here, I see the Syrians, the Moroccans, the Turkish people. That's what they do. They pool all the resources together 
and they have one main goal is to create wealth, generational wealth. Yes. Right? And 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 they, they never leave each other. Yes. Never. You know, and, and and this is a lesson that we need to learn. But Kanye said something about his wife and his wife family. Yes. If because um Tristan Thompson, the basketball player, is is with one of the, I think, Chloe Kardashian. I don't remember. I think Chloe Kardashian. She's the one that's becoming a billionaire soon. She has a makeup line. She has all of Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She had an issue. And all the Kardashian sisters dropped what they were doing, and they went to her. They were all over the country, all over the, somewhere overseas. Wow. And they cut what they were doing, charter their private jet, and fly to Chloe's side. Wow. Wow. I, and and I'm and they have a back, you know their their background is Armenian. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So I'm saying, I mean, are we doing this as a community? Mm, mm, mm. You know. So so so, but but when you look, Kim was the first one to to really branch out, right? And then Kim brought all the rest of them on the platform, and everybody is doing their thing, but yeah. under one umbrella because the mother manages all of them. Wow. Wow. The mother is the manager for all of them. But but Lester, hold on. Let's you just stick it on something. So it's a family affair. Yes. Hold on. Hold on. Is there any message? Is there any clue in the Trump family as well? You know this is a family affair as well. You know this only bringing yes, this right. family close. Okay, there's yes. nepotism. There's nepotism. Let's let's call it there's nepotism and blah blah yes. blah. But still he brings his family close. His daughter, I consider a watchdog. She watches over her father's back. Bridget. Exactly. She watches exactly. over her father. How many, how many parents would love to know that their children is watching over their back? Exactly. Listen, but, man. Uh, but but Boot Stewart. Let's let's bring it to Jamaica. Yes, yes. But, but Stewart Boot is Stewart. That, uh, for those overseas, but Stewart is an entrepreneur in Jamaica that owns Sandals chain of Hotels, yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Well, he has, um, I think, 32 different companies under the ATL group of companies. Brand. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Like, like because, brands, yes. two, because he has a construction side of the of the company also that 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 that, that company builds the rest of the infrastructure. And, you know, he has um, CPL. The, 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 so... Yes. I think I lost Lester. Come back, Lester. So, okay. Sorry about that. I was, yeah. I was yeah. getting a phone call. I'm, I'm yes. totally sorry. But what I'm saying is that all of his seven children, even the one that died, has worked for Sandals. Wow. Wow. Did I lose you a while ago? So all of the children has worked for Sandals. I, call, I know the call is going to keep coming in. on The call is going to keep coming in until, isn't it? I know what's happening there now. You know, but, 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 but what I'm saying is that in, in closing, we have to decide what we want to do. Do we want to build and to be a, a part of the solution or do we want to be sitting back complaining and waiting for somebody to fix our problems for us? Yes, yes, yes. That's a, that's a good note to leave on, Lester. And, and I think yeah. the, the message has gone out there. It, it's been a good show. The feedback is and um, it's powerful. And I'll be continuing along these lines. And of course, Sunday night, I'm calling it inspirational night, motivational night, where I drop some, some nuggets there. Um, but yeah. it's very crucial as much as possible. I will be dissecting and going into these issues. And listen, we are not all perfect and we don't have all the answers. And so, um, but at the same time, our heart is in one accord. As Sherry yeah. Scott, the yes of one accord. So, bro, yeah. respect, fist, punch. Am I punching? I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the fist. <laughs> Still Wait, hold on. Yeah. No, but, uh, you, you know, you know, this is for you, this is for me. Oh well, the space <laughs> okay, okay. All right, see you later. Okay. Peace out. Bye listener. All right, all right Silver, thanks. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for coming on. And that was a really good um, uh, show with Lester and also with Patrick Hampton from the States. <laughs> Somebody realized that he's, a, he's, he's trying to put me in a show and uh, the PNP and GLP thing. You know, politics is a part of our blood and we love politics no matter what. And it's very important that we really interface and get to know each other 
uh, as much as possible. I want to thank you so much for coming on tonight and to really hope that you share this video as well. It's very long, but I believe it's very important and it's very, um, 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 what should I say, soul searching. Um, and the whole issue is not just about political affiliation, but it's about how we treat each other as a people. And I believe that is so important. That's one of my central message all the while. That's something which I always talk about, having respect for each other, having respect for person's opinion, a per person's views, learning the art of disagreeing, how to agree to disagree, because we are not always think the same way. And as well, everybody's fingerprint is different. Everybody has a different fingerprint, different DNA, and um, that means to say simply that we all have a difference. You know, I, I don't believe that all uh, black people should think the same way. We don't all think the same way. We're not on a plantation. We must be free to be able to vote conservative, vote um, Labour, vote Republican, vote um, you know um, Democrats as well as possible. But yet at the same time, being able to agree to disagree and have a chat, have a drink, and just get together and love each other. Yes, it sounds very very, what do I say, sometimes cheesy sometimes to love each other, but yeah, let's love each other and, and hug each other, you know, what kind of spirit, you know. So thank you so much for coming on, and remember, please feel free, and I encourage you to share this video, to like my uh, YouTube channel, which is Silver and TV, uh, like me on, on Facebook, Silver and TV, on Instagram, Silver and TV, um, also on um, uh, Snapchat as well, Silver and and Twitter as well. And also I'm releasing the show with Andrew, Andrew from Manual Academy on the YouTube channel, which is coming out tomorrow night, where we're just gonna talk about um, black men in the community, the Manhood Academy, also the Womanhood Academy also started out as well. And then next week, I'm gonna have Black Adred. Black Adred is gonna come out on the show uh, and as well more guests that is on the red chair in the Silver Show. Um, go on to YouTube, you can see that as well. And, um, and let's empower each other and let us, Bless Kanye West. Okay? Peace out and love you. See you later. Bye bye.